just over a year ago, I recorded a video about my the beginning of my journey with with being diagnosed with breast cancer. You can find the the link in the description for for this video. Uh, my mastectomy surgery was a year ago yesterday, so I thought it was fitting to give some kind of update about how things have gone. I've had five major surgeries since uh, since this all began, from the lumpectomy when they first took out the, the lump, to the double mastectomy, to um, three reconstruction surgeries, the last of which was two weeks ago in the middle, three weeks ago in the middle of April. I've had quite a lot of time in hospital, quite a lot of time on painkillers, quite a lot of time recovering in, in bed. Um, and it's been it's been a long year. I've had amazing doctors and I've had amazing support from family and friends and my my husband has just been absolutely incredible. He deserves husband husband of the decade award. The medical age actually was pretty good, very good actually. Um, they've paid. I would probably say about 95 to 98% of, of all the costs involved, which has been incredible. I want to say though, as advice is don't accept the first, um, don't accept the first decision if your claims are rejected um, or partly paid. In a lot of cases, or in most cases, they only fully paid the invoices once I'd queried and taken and escalated the discussion further about about why <laughs> about why they should cover the bills. My insurances paid out um, as expected. You always take out disability or um, you know sickness or you know life insurance critical illness cover you take these things out in the hope that when you need them they will be there and they will actually you know they will actually pay out and um, I'm very grateful and very blessed to say that they did work as intended there was quite a bit of paperwork involved but um, it it has made an enormous difference the amount of time that I've um, been unable to work because I've been in hospital or because I've been in bed recovering, you know, still having an income and having your insurance pay out to, to cover that has been extremely beneficial. It has been extremely helpful. Uh, I was able to avoid chemotherapy. Um, we did Onco-DX testing, which is like genetic testing on the, on the tumor itself. And that gives the oncologists a much better idea of whether or not the cancer cells have split off and grown and moved somewhere else. And because of the uh, the accuracy of that test, it was a good indication, and, and my oncologist was able to, to make the decision that chemotherapy wouldn't be necessary for, for me. I'm extremely grateful, extremely grateful that, that I didn't need to go that I didn't need to go through chemo. Uh, I'm on hormone treatment for and will be for the next five years, so that's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, slowly getting getting used to the the, the symptoms of um, sort of an early menopause, if you will. Um, so that's not that's not exciting. Um, my cancer was estrogen sensitive, hence the hormone treatment and another side effect or another part of the impact is that uh, falling pregnant would be extremely dangerous for me so kids are pretty much out the question um, at the very least for for the next five to ten years um, after which you know I think age-wise I wouldn't really want to be starting a family at that point so that's something that we've we've taken off we've taken off the cards the the surgeries were extremely painful <laughs> very uncomfortable um and i think you yeah, i was very grateful that uh, i was in fairly good shape before the first surgery before the um mastectomy because what no one tells you beforehand is that you can't sit you can't sit up on your own because you've been you've been cut and all your muscles have been cut 
Um, so you have no strength in shoulders, arms, chest. Uh, so if you can't sit up from your core muscles, from your stomach muscles alone, you need to stay in hospital for longer so that you have a bed that, you know, <laughs> that can help you sit up. So I'm very grateful that we were doing gym and, and going to gym and I had uh, worked on my core muscles before before the surgery. So that I think is a, a, a caution to, to, to all of us to... to um, Make sure you're in shape. If you ever need any kind of emergency procedures, <laughs> the physiotherapy and recovery is a lot faster if you're healthier than, than if you're not. It has meant some lifestyle changes and decisions as well. I think it's a very big cliche that when you're faced with something like this, when you're faced with cancer, you you consider making different decisions about your life and different choices. And Part of that for for Richard and I was to 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 move and to to explore life beyond South Africa and to travel more and to that end we were building businesses online we were building our our work and doing everything online and um, we moved to Montenegro we've been here less than a week we've been here a few days now you can see in the background actually you can see where I am I'm in a small town called Resan in Montenegro it is very quiet here <laughs> very quiet uh, that is Kotel Bay which is that is the ocean that you're looking at there that's the sea beautiful absolutely absolutely beautiful so part of our decision was was based on my health and and the priority shift of what we wanted and what we didn't want our lives to look like considering you know when something like this happens what are your priorities where do you really want to be where do you really want to see yourself I suggested in my last video that you know people women especially go for genetic testing you know, to draw up a family tree and assess the risks for themselves and and they you know the, the, the woman in their family and potentially, you know, and consider go going for genetic testing, going for bracket testing. And um I find it interesting that a lot of people, a lot of women, their response has been, I don't actually want to know. I don't want to open Pandora's box and I don't, you know, I don't want to know that. And I understand that that's everybody's decision, but I think given what I went through, given, you know, given the emotional journey, given the physical journey and given the financial journey and the time and, and, and that, I think, you know, the empowerment of knowing something like that, the empowerment of, of having that knowledge, you know, if, if, you, if you're at a 60 plus percent chance of, of, of developing developing some kind of cancer I, I can't imagine that that wouldn't be something that you would want to know so that you can manage and and you know you can manage the situation and deal with it so I, I urge again <laughs> I urge I urge you and people in your family to to take care of yourselves and to to check things out for 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 women go to, you know go have your annual checkups boring I know we we really don't look after ourselves very well um, go check yourselves out if if something seems wrong something seems abnormal not quite usual go and check it out it's never anything until the day that it is you know we always write to office oh, it's just nothing until the day you know until the day that it is so I'm, I'm very grateful very blessed to say that I'm cancer free at this point um, I will go for for annual screens um, to you know to, to do some some tests in that there is a possibility that I may develop um, breast cancer in my lungs or liver very weird <laughs> but um, but yeah I look I have to look after myself stay healthy my last reconstruction surgery is is now over and now it's just the healing it's you know healing from that and um, I've been incredibly blessed, incredibly blessed. And I'm so grateful and thankful for the people who have supported me and had patience with me and given me the time to heal and looked after me and 
sat by my hospital bed and sent me flowers and gifts and just let me know that they were thinking of me and um, it's very special to know how many people are on your side when when you need it the most and um, I just hope that you don't need that type of support and that you don't have to go through that type of thing and the best way to do that is look after yourself and make sure you know what's going on with with you and and, and your body and your family thanks